Hi there YouTube friends, Zanny SEO. Welcome back to Auntie A's Kitchen. I hope you're having a fantastic week. In this week's video, I'm gonna share with you how to put together a mouth-watering cheese and charcuterie board. You may have also heard this referred as a grazing table. Now traditionally a charcuterie board is made up of cold cooked and cured meats and pâtés. Today we're going to be adding it with some cheese and when this is put together well it is a food art masterpiece equal to any Picasso that you might look at. These are effortless to prepare, great to serve as a starter or a main course and fantastic for special occasions. The combinations of flavour, colours and textures both contrast and complement each other and what's great about these cheese and charcuterie balls is there's something for everyone. So thanks for watching today, make sure to watch this video all the way through as I'm not only going to be sharing my A to Z guys and how to set this up but there's going to be lots of tips and ideas for you to make this for your friends and family. So thanks for watching today, let's get started. The first thing you want to decide is the style or theme. I like a rustic look, so I usually use wood or slate to serve my cheese and charcuterie on. Depending on how many people is how big a board I choose. There are no set rules, so you could use lots of small serving dishes if you wanted. Having a fresh, vibrant green salad is an optional extra. Keep the salad basic with different types of leaves and textures. I like to add some broccoli, then allow your guests to add ingredients from your cheese and charcuterie board to their salad. Alongside your salad, you can serve a shop-bought dressing or make a simple vinaigrette. Into a bowl, add some extra virgin oil, some mustard, lemon juice. I season with a mixed spice of garlic, onion, salt and pepper that you can get at home plus, and then I add a little bit more garlic. Mix this all together and you have a delicious, simple vinaigrette. When placing your cheeses on the board, make sure to spread them out. You could use either two to three whole cheeses or five to six smaller pieces of different cheeses, which is what I decide to go for today. I want to showcase the onion bacon jam that we made in last week's video, so I decide to make that the centerpiece and place the cheese and meat around it. When it comes to choosing your cheeses, make sure to have a variety of different textures and flavours. I also think it looks nice if you cut and prepare them in different ways. This also makes it easier for people to grab a piece on the board. Some I will slice, some cheese I'll crumble and others I'll cut into cubes. If you're using whole blocks of cheese then I recommend not cutting them up completely, just cut a few pieces to get people started. Next, for the meats, use the same principle as you did for the cheese, making sure not only to have a variety of flavour but lay them out in different ways. The bruschetto I will tear up, the pepperoni I'll slice and my larger salami pieces I will fold up. For anyone living in Korea, all the cheeses I'm using today I got from Emart and all of the meats from Home Plus. But at the end of the day, just use ingredients that not only you like, but you have available in your local store. Once you have your meat and cheese on the board and any serving dishes in place, then you can start filling up the empty spaces. With the vegetables, I like to use a variety of raw and pickled, making sure to spread out all the different colors across the board. When it comes to the fruit, not only are you going to use a variety of color, but I recommend using fruit in season for the time of year. Today, I'm using one of my favorite fruits, pomegranate, as well as fresh fruit, dried fruit like apricots, dates, prunes, cranberries also pair well with cheese. A quick tip, if you're using a sliced apple, just drizzle some lemon juice over to slow down the browning. I think a good cheese and charcuterie board has a lot of variety, so you can see I've already added some honey and some pickles alongside the onion bacon jam, which will pair well with the different cheeses and meats. With the last remaining space on the board, I fill in with some nuts and seeds, sprinkling some over the cheese to decorate. I also like to decorate with some fresh rosemary or edible flowers if I have some. The last part of our cheese and charcuterie board to prepare is some bread. And again, to bring variety, you want to make sure that you have different textures, soft, toasted, or even different types of crackers, biscuits, breadsticks, whatever you can get your hands on. I would recommend not using strong flavored bread so that you could let the cheese and the meats be the star of the show when it comes to flavor. Just a few extra tips before I leave you. You will want to allow your cheese to sit at room temperature for about 30 minutes to one hour before serving for the best consistency and flavor. And when thinking about quantities, allow about six ounces or 
180 grams of cheese and meat per person if you're serving this as a main course and less if you're serving it as a starter. This really is a simple and fun recipe to prepare. So as I mentioned in the introduction, let the food be your paint and the serving board your canvas and enjoy creating your cheese and charcuterie board masterpieces for friends and family. Once you've made this, leave a comment below and let me know your favorite food combinations and don't forget to tag me in your photos on Instagram. Have a great week and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. God bless. Chop or cam the dare.